Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a new game here on the channel called Sir Whoopass Immortal Death. Uh, off the name alone, it sounded like it's going to be a banger, plus it was half off and has really good reviews, so I decided to cop it. So let's go ahead and check it out. I recorded the same video yesterday, but OBS has been being stupid the past few days, so here we are again. But yeah, let's check it. This story begins like many other games in this genre, on a dark and stormy night. This is, of course, only for dramatic effect. Adding to this drama, we see the main antagonist busy with evil deeds. This is used as comic relief, but also to establish character. All villains need a loyal and annoying servant that ultimately will betray his master in the end. This story is no exception and has chosen Sullivan for the task. My lord, the experiment has escaped. He pants. Two things. First, sound the alarm and activate all the traps. The immortal annoyedly replies. And if he somehow should make it out, I'm sure the dragon... I'm sorry, Wyvern wouldn't mind a snack. Second, you need some exercise. Sorry, but if I sugarcoat it, you'll eat that too, he continues. But what about the protagonist, our hero? The one with a fancy walk and a mighty weapon. Yeah, this is not him. This is just a random trash mob. Will he be used later on in the game? No. Say goodbye to him forever. Finally, we see our actual hero, but it's too peaceful. Something needs to break this tranquility. As y'all can tell, this game is like comedy mixed with fantasy, so it's kind of like Saints Row and Dark Souls or something like that had a baby almost. Every hero has a sidekick that, for no apparent reason, has a superpower that will aid the hero in solving critical puzzles. We picked Lucy for this mission. Will her backstory and how she ended up at this convenient location be explained? Probably not. Our hero picked her up and continued with his quest. Gnomes are your main sources of protein. Press button to consume one. They are delicious. Gnomes are hiding inside barrels and crates, but can also be found roaming around freely in the landscape. Oh, would you look at that! This can be used to purchase heavy weapons, such as hammers, from the Black Schmidt. <laughs> K 
Congratulations! You found your very first weapon. Press button to tear up your enemies and manage your equipped weapon in the inventory by pressing button. By pressing button. Flamboyant work. Nice. Hmm. All the pages are torn out. It, it. Apparently, it can be used to purchase fast weapons, such as swords, from the blacksmith. At this point, something interesting needs to happen. How about some orcs having trouble connecting to their Wi-Fi, for example? No, not good enough. Take a look at this big pressure plate instead. Hmm, interesting. Yes! This outcome probably didn't come as a surprise to anyone. Except for Sullivan, who got very surprised to see the prisoner, our hero, escape on a killing spree in the dungeon. This perfectly wraps up the introduction, though. Let's continue. Beard. This shiny thing can be used to purchase ranged weapons, such as stars and crossbows from the blacksmith. that one's wife. A rarity. It does not generate enough lift to be airborne, but reduces fall damage when equipped. What? These traps don't make any sense. Who even designs living areas like this? Oh well. Crack open a cold one and whip some more ass during a limited amount of time. Hurry up and disassemble some orcs!
A bit over refreshed and hungry, but looks pretty happy. Got yourself a magic stick filled to the brim with the awesome burning fury. Press button to switch to it and release the destructive force of a slight cough. Now that we have reached the end of the tutorial level, the player is ready for the actual game. But here's also the mandatory deadly swinging trap section with a jumping puzzle, just as expected. Just as expected. There it is. I remember that from your spin house plan. Oh, I forgot I had this thing out. Finally, we are done. This is also emphasized in the uplifting background music. In fact, we have decided we are completely done with our hero as well. It's time to let things go. Let's show what really happened.
This mysteriously bobbing ghost lady is Melisande, leader of the Ceaseless Warriors Guild that now had become ceased. She asked who our hero was and where he came from. Melisande paid no attention to our hero's answer since she was too busy thinking about the big explosion that killed her. She asked our hero if he had something to do with it. Outraged by the answer, Melisande demanded our hero to resurrect her before it was too late. She explained that the ingredients could be found in and around the village and the ritual could be performed in the basement of the Jolly Barrel Inn. Also, it's too dangerous to walk alone. Take my mace with you. I can't use it in this form anyways, she added before she vanished. Wow! You just acquired your first heavy-duty weapon. Heavy weapons are used to destroy heavy things. Press button to switch to it, and let the havoc begin! Directly from your local farmers in Stonedale. Smells delicious. This potion is conveniently implemented as a powerful power-up. To consume it, open your inventory by pressing button. Navigate to potions and try it out. We gotta head down to the basement so we can turn that girl back uh, back alive. Our hero browsed through the spell book and confidently picked the correct spell, as any protagonist would do. We'll go with Oaiusaspa. Yep, that's the one. As Melisande casually thanked our hero for reviving her, she couldn't fail to notice something felt a bit off. She apparently was not fully recovered and asked if our hero really had used the correct spell on her. Yes, of course. Our hero lied. This was a terrible situation. Now that Melisande's warriors were all dead and she was incapable to fight, she explained that orcs and other foul beasts were harassing the lands and they needed someone to keep them at bay before the immortal grew too powerful. 
Our hero had not yet heard about the main antagonist and asked Melisande to explain a bit more about him. A long time ago, the immortal came to this land. He introduced himself as a humble and kind wizard that spoiled the people with gifts and luxurious artifacts, which they naively accepted. He eventually became acquainted with the highest royalties in the capital city, earning him more trust and access to all of the land's resources, free of charge. Big mistake. One morning, the citizens were awoken by the immortal's enchanting voice with the city shaking uncontrollably. Not only did he split the capital city, but he also divided the land into three parts, making it impossible for the people to reach him. Fortunately for us, he is a villain of good conduct and forged the villain-beating artifact, the only weapon powerful enough to defeat him. The whereabouts of this weapon is, of course, unknown. Melisande realized she could not take on the quest to defeat the immortal in her current state and asked our hero to take her place instead. She realized our hero maybe could be useful after all by talking to Richard Morningwood, the ticket master. He is located just outside town at his extraordinary carnival site, she added. But your weapon looks terrible. Did you get that out of a cereal box? Visit the blacksmith here in town and get yourself some new gear, she added. Melisande will remain here at the inn and keep the local pub supporters hydrated until she has healed. Ruff, ruff, the moral woof, ruff, ruff, meow. Ruff, 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 ruff. The moral woof, ruff, 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 ruff. Sure, ruff, ruff. Woof and woof, ass. Yeah, that's our greatest source of entertainment around here, and unfortunately broken as well. The goblin explained. It seems to be related to its power source, though. If you can track down the issue, you might get it back up online again. He added. If I was the main protagonist of an indie action adventure video game, and not the bard, I'd start my investigation at the power inlet outside. He hinted. <laughs> Yeah. 
The blacksmith asked, Need something to help your enemies see the error of their ways? All right. We're going to have to get us a uh, small ass sword. Hell yeah. It is said size doesn't matter, but this sword begs to differ. Oh yeah, no way. I am not I am not touching that. <laughs> I tried that last time and I could not get it. I was over here for like 15 minutes trying to work it out. Yeah, I'll go ahead. I'll show you all these uh, different outfits they got. They have one that's Optimus Prime. So yeah, we're gonna save up. We're gonna have to get that one for sure. <laughs> all right, let's head up here. Our hero needed to buy a ticket before he could use the ride. Instantly consumed and has the effect of lowering all damage taken for some unexplained reason. For some unexplained reason. Our hero met Richard Morningwood, the ticket master, who explained that no one could buy tickets for the tourist attraction since his ticket machine was stolen. Richard Morningwood, the ticket master, asked if our hero could help him find it and in exchange get a discount on the ticket price. There are some suspicious tracks leading from here that might take you to the thieves. I'd start checking that out. Richard Morningwood, the ticket master, said.
I felt that one. to require some sort of flying device. The game probably just shows off to hype up the player for what's to come. Better return here later. <laughs> All right, that was the most random spot. I didn't expect to go there. Watch out! These explode upon impact. Apparently, they can be thrown on your enemies by pressing a button. Try it out and see what happens. Someone will clean that up. caught up by the IRS, Immortal Revenue Service, and was prompted to pay his income tax. The IRS guy was not taking no for an answer, and decided to take our hero's body as payment instead.
get you into all royal and posh parties. Sewer level. How original. Let's rip this band-aid off quickly and get it over with, I guess. <gasps> Is this what's called foreshadowing? for that move.
Penny Dumb, you're going down. Does this thing really print tickets? All this for the ticket of Tron? Bruh. <laughs> Had to fight Penny Dumb. That go through the sewers. Go through a shark infested water. And he's still laughing. What? See if we can make our way out of the uh, sewers. There's an exit right there. Let's see what this goes to. There we go. Your ordinary bowler for fancy occasions. Richard Morningwood, the ticket master, thanked our hero for his heroic effort, but complained slightly about his smell. Richard Morningwood, the ticket master, asked if our hero would like to buy a ticket for the wild and extraordinary Guardian Tower tour. Our hero bought a ticket, and Richard Morningwood, the ticket master, wished him safe travels through the portal to the attraction. All right, everybody. I think that's going to do it for us today. If y'all enjoyed this game and enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like. If y'all like to see more, let me know in the comments because I more than likely will do a playthrough of this. Uh, I think it's only about like four or five hours long. It's not that big, I don't think. So, yeah. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.